My name is Joanne Egan and I'm from the northeast of England. I'm originally from South Shields. I had quite a difficult childhood. Um, what springs to mind? Just playing and doing the normal things that children do, you know, playing in the house and going to school. M my dad's from Ireland. He's um, Catholic. He got brought up in a Catholic religion, so um, he wanted us to go to a Catholic school. Me mum, she um, came from a background that um, she didn't have any religion or anything. So my dad was quite interested, like wanted to send us to, along to a Catholic school so we would have, um, you know, like learn respect and beliefs in um, like God and stuff like that. Um, and we had quite a, quite a strict upbringing. Um, which was quite nice in a way because we always had a mum and mum and dad there and they're still together even 46 years later. So that's really nice that they've stayed together throughout loads of different difficult times and stuff. Um, just normal family unit really, mum, dad, brother, sister, and then I was the youngest one. Um, School, we went along to school, and with us being in a Catholic school, we had we had to go to church about oh, about five times a week. It it was, it, and we you learned the Old Testament back then, because I'm you know I'm getting on slightly, but that was like forty years ago, so it wasn't this new testimony that the Catholic people have got a new testimony, but it was the Old Testimony. Um. So we used to go along to church quite a lot. Um, so that's all I knew, really. Um, there was there were certain things I, I felt like I questioned about, certain things about my religion. I thought, it's a bit strange. But I didn't look into it too much because I was on my journey in life. Um, you know, like, at school and studying and doing lots of different things in my life and it it wasn't some it wasn't something I had come across anything to do with religion. I stopped believing in it because of I suppose maybe other people maybe things that some bad people make you think I not gonna believe in that. I don't want to believe in a religion. I'm not going to believe in it. Because it was, it was almost like they were hypocritical. One minute they were going along to church and then the next minute they were like evil and and I just thought... And it was always the type of place where... Um, like my friends used to go to Sunday school um, and that, that was like a church on a Sunday. But um, probably my, my mum and dad never really took us. That might be nice if they had a took us. On a Sunday, I probably would have went along. But because they weren't interested neither, well, they, they weren't really interested in anything. Without going into too much detail, I, I would... Uh, some... Um, like, you can be from... A particular religion, like I was um, a Catholic um, back when I was younger, and the, the, there was people who would, um, like, sort of... Um, I can't really... I can't really go into it too much, really, but there was a lot of difficult things that went on when I was younger. Not that made us question that religion, but... Um, made us who I am today, really. Um, so I just feel like if I hadn't went through, because I have been through a, quite a lot of bad things in my life when I was younger, and if I hadn't been through them things, then
then I wouldn't be the person that I am today. And then maybe I wouldn't be sat here as a Muslim. And, you know, so I feel like, I, f I feel like I've, after, I don't know, I just feel like I've gone on the right path. I, I questioned my religion quite a lot because I just felt like, you know, um, I don't know. There's just a lot of a lot of things that weren't weren't really nice about my my childhood. But now I've got children of my own, and I I do everything I can to the best of my ability to bring them up the way I want to bring them up. And for me, that's bringing them up as Muslim. Um, I, if anybody asks us, I say my children are Muslim, and and even if they maybe think, all oh, right, you know, um, no, no matter what, I'll, I'll always bring them up as Muslim, and that's that's what I want to do. Um, and I've got a choice, which is really good that I have a choice to do that. Well, you know, I was pretty good teenager. I wasn't like wild. You know, because I, I do think a lot of teenagers do seem to go through this part of, like, being slightly wanting to try different things and being a little bit wild and stuff. But I always was, like, um, I would watch other people. Right? I would watch my brother and sister because they were older, and, and I would watch sort of what they did wrong and think, well, I'm not going to do that, like... Um, I just, I've always wanted to do the best I can do in my life. Um, so again, then when I finally, like being a teenager, you, you sort of, you just sort of muddle through things, don't you? I wasn't really going along to church in any way, like as a Catholic. Um, I just, I felt a bit lost, you know? I felt like I... I felt like I didn't really have any way to turn and me mum and dad I always had like difficult times with them because they were quite violent when I was young. So I didn't really feel like I had them there to turn to. Even now it's still difficult, you know, because I still don't really feel like I've got them there to turn to. So it's nice to be able to turn to Allah, but sometimes you still want your mum, you know, it's like, because she's your mum. Um, but yeah, so as a teenager, I'd say I was, I wasn't in like trouble or anything. I wouldn't like go out and drinking or never smoking, nothing really. Um, not that I'm saying like that's a good or a bad thing, but that just wasn't my way. I was always into fitness. Um, I always loved fitness stuff, and funny enough, um, when when I left school, I wanted to be a professional dancer, and I did used to be a professional dancer. Um, so going from a professional dancer and then to becoming a Muslim is like complete extremes. They're extremes, but they're not. You know, like it sort of makes sense now, but back when I was younger. Nothing made sense. I felt like I was like, I didn't know who I was. You know, I was trying to be something that, like, that other people wanted us to be. Um, and really, deep down, it, it didn't really make us happy because I felt like you're almost selling yourself, you know, whereas... When you're a Muslim, you're not selling yourself. You just like if you if people don't like it, then it, it sort of like it empowers you. I think it does for me. It has done. I left school, and um, do you know? Funny enough, I left school. I didn't have one GCSE. Well, I had one, and it was in art because um, I was I was quite good at art. I was more like um, artistic, and as I say, I wanted to become a professional dancer. I used to work on. TV programmes and everything. It was fantastic. I cannot say I wouldn't have done that in my life because it was who I was then, you know, and and 
and uh, it's it, it it gave us like experiences of different things, you know, the things that I've seen and the the the, the things I didn't want to be. Um, so at the time, it was like a passion. I loved dancing, and um, I went into like performing arts. Um, and I used to work on this like television program and it was great. We were like signing autographs and I felt really important. I think I was looking for something, you know, like cause I didn't feel there was something missing, you know, there was something missing from me. And, and so I was trying to fill that gap. Um, but now when I look at it back then, I know what I was trying to do. But back then, to me, that was the world I wanted to be in. I wanted to sign autographs and I wanted to be popular and I wanted to be a dancer. And and then one day, must have been about, I, I worked being a professional dancer for about 10, 11 years. And one day I thought, I think you need to use your brain now, Joanne. So that was it. I just, I left. I ended up, um, I moved up to Scotland, left in my mum and dad's house, moved up to Scotland and um, studied science and did like a Bachelor of Science in Human Nutrition, which is like completely, you know, like a, a professional dancer and then going and studying chemistry and human biology. I didn't have one GCSE. I studied for about um, seven years. I went back to college and university and everything. And um, and then I sort of started to feel, because I had knowledge, I started to feel a little bit more, um, I just understood things a little bit more. It was different. I was starting to feel different because I have a knowledge. Um, so, and then obviously the next bit, I suppose, is like the next chapter of my life. Like when I met my husband, um, not that he ever forced anything upon us at all, one bit. Um, if anything, he was like, if I asked him a question, he'd say, I don't feel like, um, like you would say, I'll get someone who's more knowledgeable than me to tell you the question. I'd say, no, no, you just tell us it. I just want to know about like your religion. And, and we would often talk about like religion. Um, and me coming from a Catholic religion and him coming from a Muslim religion and We, obviously, we've got children now, but back 12 years ago, we didn't have any children or anything. And we were talking about, you know, in the future, if we had children and, you know, I'll tell you my story, right? Um, it doesn't really matter, really, but what happened is, um, obviously I met him, he was a Muslim. I was a Catholic. Um, it wasn't just one of them things where I all, all of a sudden said, I'm going to become a Muslim. It's been like a 12-year progress. It's been like a like slow progress of me understanding and changing things and... There was one night, this particular night that I remember, and I had went to sleep, and I woke up in the morning, and, and I swear down, I, like, I had woke up, and um, my husband didn't really used to, didn't used to mention, you know, too much about it. He would talk about it, and we would talk about it. But as he's, uh, I keep, I keep on hearing these, words 
And he was going, what do you mean? I said, it's like, um, when I wake up from sleeping, when I've been asleep, I Allah, Akbar, Allah. And he was going, do you? And I said, what, what does that mean? And he says, that's the calling. He says, have you heard that word? And I went, yeah, what, 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 what does that mean like? And ever since then, I've just become interested myself. Um, yeah, and I just, um, when I read more to do with the religion, then I get more of an understanding and then I just see things differently. We had this major thing happen in our life. Um, and unfortunately, he he had to go away for a number, number of years. And we had just been married and um, I had converted to Islam because uh, I remember seeing the words um, like Bismillah and, and I had converted and we had got married and um, he had to leave, he had to go away for a long time and I remember thinking, I don't know, how am I going to get through this? And at the time as well, I was all on my own. Me mum and dad weren't really there for us really. I was eight months pregnant, he had to leave. I was completely and utterly on my own and it was so scary. And um, it's the first time that I really, after I had heard the words, like, Allah, Akbar, this was like maybe about one year, two years down the line and um, he had to go. And I didn't even really know how to do the prayers properly, but I knew I had to wash and be clean and um, like sit a certain way. And and I would look at the little pictures and I, I did stop, I didn't tell anyone. I stopped praying every single night. No one was gonna help me like, and I, that is the only way. And even, and I feel like because I've been through something, I've had an awakening. I'm a completely different person now because when I was praying and um, I was all on my own, all, all I would pray for was the strength to get through everything I had to get through. And I was all on my own with no one and I got through it and I just feel like I was guided by Allah. Now some people, oh, some people think, oh yeah, you know, like, oh, crazy. But for me, for me it was real. The something happened, like, and this is going back four or five years ago now. And when things started to get a little bit better, don't get us wrong, like, like anyone, you'd be like, oh, no, I'm not praise much or, you know, but then I would think about things and think, well, really, that that got me through like so much at a really, really difficult time in my life when I had no one there for us, not mum and dad, brother, sister, no one. Um, and that, that was the turning point for me. It just felt more right, you know, like, when I had read to do with different stories, because I had always questioned the Catholic religion, like, because uh, Catholics believe, obviously, um, Jesus is the son of God. But obviously the Muslim religion, um, Islam, believes that Jesus was a prophet and that Muhammad was the last prophet. I believe that, I believe the Islam religion, so therefore, I started picking on, up the books to do with um, Islam. I had this brilliant little book. I, I would, you know, because I, I, I'm like severely dyslexic, so it's still, even though I've done like science degrees, it's still hard for us to read the books. 
Now, a lot of people who aren't don't have learning dis disabilities or anything. They don't really have any excuse not to pick up a book. But mine's like, oh, I've got really difficulty in understanding that and reading that book. And But I'll try and I'll try again and I'll try again. So I kept on picking up the book and picking up. So that's in a way, that's why it's taken me longer to learn about things than other people. Um, but... The stories just made more sense to me. And I feel like the truth was almost hidden from us. Now, a lot of people will say, oh, yeah, you know. But I say to them, but I, I've, I, me reading the, um, the Old Testimony, even in the Old Testimony, it says in the... And I remember, I remember reading it in church when I was like seven, like, thou shall not eat the meat of a swine. Now, that's a pig. And that is what... It, that's the Quran. It states that they, they don't eat. Um, it, yeah, in the New Testimony, they've changed it. They've took that out. So... Um, I, I, I just believe that it's been changed just that many times. Whereas the Quran hasn't been changed. You know, it's, it is what it is. It's like untouched. The, so that's why I'm, I questioned all the, I questioned like, and, and yeah, I, I, back when I was a Catholic, it, uh, I didn't, you know, they used, to, they used to worship like a, like a Jesus Christ and on a cross. And I, I just felt so uncomfortable, like it didn't feel right. Whereas then when I obviously got introduced to, not introduced, but I've sort of looked in the religion religion myself because my husband's never pushed anything upon us. Um and sometimes I, I wish he would maybe say, Do you know there's another book for you to read. Do you want to read that book? But he wouldn't. He would just not say nothing and um so for me I, I just feel like that I feel like I know more the truth now. I, I, I just feel like but I feel like this is only in the beginning. I'm just like, I think differently, I act differently. I feel my life has become like more enriched, you know, with the nice things in life, instead of like all the horrible, like evil things that are in society. And I know they're here and you, you can never, there'll always be here. Like, is it the jinn or the devil? Or, you know, that'll always be here and it'll always be maybe just a little bit away from you saying, come on, come on, like. And then it's almost like you've got an angel on that side going, don't listen to them, you know, like come this way. You know, and, and that's how it is sort of thing as if you're on this path and <laughs> there is quite a lot of evil things, really. And I, and I feel like with Islam, I'm protected. I can protect my little family and I can protect the children more. And, um, and, and, and funny enough, like me not coming from the religion, it's me that say to the children, come on, wait, you have to go to the mosque. You know, we have to go to the mosque. Oh, where do we need to go to the mosque? I'm saying, because you need to learn about who you are and about what it's all about, because it teaches you in the book, it teaches you about life. It's all in that book. Um, so, and, and it was me who's even enforced it not enforced it upon the children to go to the mosque, but I want them to know about Islam and understand it, and then they'll they'll make the right choices when they're ready. But if they haven't got the knowledge, 
then how can they make the choice? So they need to have the knowledge first of Islam to make the right choice. Um, Because there's going to be things in the way that try and stop them from going on the right path, really. I had my dad with him being Irish Catholic. They were a bit sort of just thought I was maybe going a bit crazy. Like, what do you mean? But then, funny enough, they only have all the halal meat in the house now. Oh, the it's lovely and um, it tastes beautiful. And I says, yes, obviously, you know, because the blood is, is drained out of it and the impurities are taken out of it. And, and so it's pure. It's It's got a nicer taste to it, obviously, because I've had the other food and, and it's not nice. It's 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 like it doesn't taste right. It just um, they were not upset or anything, but we would often have discussions about it until the point where we don't have discussions now because they they have got no answers in what they are saying. There's no truth in it, so. There's no more discussions now. We don't really... He just accepts that we're a Muslim family um, and the children as well. Um, at first, when I was having a child, he was, ooh, Muslim child, ooh. Like, if me granda had been alive and me granda's from, like, Dublin in Ireland, he used to be like, I'm telling you now, <laughs> he would have just been, like, looking at us thinking... <gasps> Joanne's marrying a Muslim man. Oh, she's going to have, like, Muslim children. And some of the family members are quite... They are slightly racist and slightly quite rude, actually, um, with regards to, like, the religion or... Or they'll say certain things that they believe to be true when it's, it's all hearsay, when they don't even know the truth. Um, but sometimes they, they like, I think they enjoy not knowing the truth. Yeah. I mean, I suppose people are, society's changing, but back 12 years ago, there wasn't very many, you didn't really see many um, Muslim men being with like an English woman. It wasn't, we, the, I didn't, apart from us in the Northeast, there wasn't like lots of um, like mixed cultural uh, relationships and stuff. With, um, but yeah, I used to get like a lot of like stares, and it still is like that in a way. But we, it's it's not even in our world, you know. Like you can feel people a lot of the times with the children. Like, cause one of my little girls, she's, she's, she's very brown, Asian, like dark hair. And people used to say, even in hospital when she was born, is that your baby? And, and I'd say, yes. And they'd say, all right, sorry. We, 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 you know, we didn't realize it was your child. Um, so, I suppose you do, you do get people having certain opinions or think, <laughs> funny enough, <clears throat> a lot of people tend to think, um, oh yeah, does he, do you have to like be in the kitchen all the time, like cooking and do you have to do, and I say, do, I do, I do nothing. You know, he he is so good. He like makes me cups of tea and 
And they're like, really? And I said, well, yes. Why wouldn't you not think that? Oh, I just thought because he's Muslim, I thought he maybe doesn't um, do lots of, you know, helping you or cooking or... But I think a lot of it is the, the media, television. It is just like, it's just amazing how it can just encapture people's minds and just make them all like work like sheep almost, you know, like following each other. <clears throat> um, so, yeah, but you do, you do come across quite a lot of rude people and... We've always had quite nice friends though and we keep nice people around us so we don't entertain people who have got certain views of us or, um, or even family members, if that may be. We just don't really see them very much. Or, um, and he comes from a big family. I'm probably the first... Um, person to come into the family who hasn't been Muslim and who's converted. I was one other lady about German lady. Um but again um it's almost seen like you who oh, which really if if I see somebody come into the re religion I I would like embrace them because I would think like you know, they, like, l love, like, the way we live our lives and the way we, um, like, the way we do things on a daily basis. Um, but it, I don't know if it tends to be that way. My husband fasts um, on Ramadan... I do find it quite difficult. I mean, I have done days, but I haven't done the whole, you know, the whole, is it the whole month, like the whole four weeks. Um, only really mainly because I've had different medical reasons which do sort of, um, means you can maybe, you, you might not be able to do Ramadan and stuff. Um, but I do find it really interesting when the Ramadan month comes up and um, and then I watch him fasting and for years I've thought, I've always thought it, that it, 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 to watch him do that is really like, you can see um, it like empowers him, you know, like when he opens his fast and stuff. And I've always like really enjoyed it. I think it's like a, a joyous time, whereas other people might think, oh my God, like your husband fasts for a month and, you know, and, he, oh, and he's got to get up like so early in the morning to pray and then you make him breakfast like four o'clock in the morning. Um, but if, if you love someone, wouldn't you not do that in any way? So, and because he's like dedicated to his religion, and I think it's lovely. It says a lot about a person. Um, so he does the Ramadan, and then the me, the my children, they've the little one. She's nearly seven, so she started to ask about it. Well, can I do like a day do a fasting, and and she's asked me about it quite a lot, and I don't feel like I've know enough to explain everything to do with it. Um, and it's lovely even when, when I hear him praying in the house and stuff. Like, I love that. And I love I watch it when, he, when, when she watches and he prays. And it's just lovely, you know, the, the words. And I remember we used to have some, some neighbours next door... Um, and when my husband had to go away for years and years and have had this lovely Asian woman who lived next door 
and I'll say mashallah, but she was so, so nice. She, I felt like she was there just for me because I had no one there. I mean, not even his family would really acknowledge us, which was hard as well. I had a little baby and stuff. Um, and she would come and bring us curry and stuff. And um, I just felt like Allah was watching over us, you know, because I would be praying all the time and she would come and bring us curry and there was times when I didn't even have no, no meat. It was that bad. I didn't even have any food, hardly eat, which is, you kind of believe that is, that, is that the case in England, that someone could be in that position, but it happens. Um, and at that point, you can go down any road, you know, because you, you're almost like so scared. But because I was praying all the time, I felt protected. Um, I just kept myself, myself, and the little Asian woman would bring us food. And I remember when she um, she passed away, and it's the only time I've ever cried about someone who's ever passed away. I mean, my granddad's passed away, my nana's passed away, my other granddad's passed, uh, passed away. Never, ever cried for them. But the woman who used to bring us curry, I, I had a little cry, and I was, I was actually felt like me... Uh, my heart had been touched when I, I seen them, like, obviously, and they carried our body out and, the, and, and they were praying, like, at the end, before she passed away, they were, like, uh, reciting and, and it just sounded so powerful, the words, and I even had the glass on, because she used to live right next door to us, and I had the glass on the side and I was listening to the prayers and everything and I just thought... It's something I hadn't seen, you see. So for me, that like, was amazing. Um, because I hadn't came from that world that people would pray when you're poorly, like, by your bedside and recite all the different... Is it the different surahs? Or, and it was... Um, yeah, it was, it was really special. So, to be honest with you, I, I feel like I, I maybe should go home and pray tonight because sometimes I do maybe forget, you know, and think, oh, I maybe leave it for the night because everything's all right and no one's, like, poorly up. And that's wrong, really. So um, I'll be at home. <laughs> I'll be at home praying tonight. And I've got a little girl who's seven, Alicia, and I've got Amaya who's two and a half, um, I, s I wanted Alicia to start, she started going along a mosque when she was about five. She's getting to that age where she's like, oh, I don't want to go at the mosque. And so I'm at that point of a bit of a struggle at the moment, which I'm, I'm a bit unsure how to get through that, but... Um, yeah, she's a, she's a good little kid, and she's she's like with her growing up in a, a Muslim family, she's she knows respect and she understands things that I, I can see in children who aren't Muslim. Not that I'm saying it's a bad thing, but I, I when I go into a non-Muslim house. I know I'm in a non-Muslim house. It's completely different. You know, you would often hear, like, maybe one of the children swearing at the moms, like, eight-year-olds and stuff, and you would just be like, oh, my God, how disrespectful. That, you know, um... But, um... Inshallah, she's... Uh, I, I want her to you know, learn all about our religion because I've brought her into the world as a Muslim and I remember when she was first born and they did the prayer, like, into her ear. Oh, and it just, like, it brought a tear to my eye. I just thought, I just thought, oh, that is just, it's just so nice. Um, and, I, and I try to explain to her about just what it is to be a good person, you know, because even some people who a Muslim can be 
not good people. So um, it's about having a pure heart, and in the end, that's what I feel. Um, my little girl, who was two and a half, she's so she's so intelligent. She she's like me. She can talk for Britain. <laughs> She's just like, ah, and she talks away. Um, and she often, sometimes she says, um, she's, when, when she was about one, she started wearing, putting her little headscarf on. And we were saying, oh, she looks so cute. And um, she wanted to wait, you know, in the metal land or the shops. And I was a bit nervous thinking, oh, a lot of the, the people in England are going to think I've... I forced the one-year-old to wear that because I know how they think. But then I know how I think now. But I sort of did used to think like that, in a way. But I no longer think that way. So I've got an understanding of what they're thinking and how it really is. Um, but she likes putting on a little headscarf and she'll say... Um, Funny enough, she put, she she says, uh, the two-year-old says, I want to wear me Salam Alaikum clothes. <laughs> and it's good. obviously the clothes is not called Salam Alaikum, but she knows that when people greet each other, they say Salam Alaikum. So she said, I want to put me Salam Alaikum clothes on. Um, but the lovely, the innocent and sweet, and um, I want to protect them as much as what I can. So that's why I'm bringing them up as Muslim to protect them as much as what I can. Um, and inshallah, I, w I would like them to get married to Muslim. Yeah, definitely Muslim, Some somebody else who's Muslim, because then that's somebody else who's got similar beliefs and, you know, it's it's a big thing. So there's no going back for me. That's it now. Uh, that, that, the old life that I came from, I don't want to be part of that no more. Um, it's almost like I've seen the light. <laughs>